Hello, friends. So good to be with you today. Got something very special I want to share with you. I want to talk to you about fear. I think this is really important. I think right now we're dealing with so many things across the country and around the world that has really caused a, a lot of uh, instability to take place in people to where they literally are are uh, freaking out. They're falling apart over it. It's causing it's a, it's like the fear is starting a, a snowball effect that people can't. Uh, they cannot pull it into line. And so that's what I want to talk to you about for a few moments. I want to talk to you about fear. And so I don't want to diminish that. I don't want to just say, well, just get over it. I'm going to show you today how to get over it. I'm going to show you how to deal with fear that comes into your life. Because, uh, you know, we, we cannot approach the things that, that we're looking at in life and somehow act as though either it doesn't exist or it's no big deal. It is a big deal. I'm telling you something right now, all of the things that's happening in this country, it's a big deal, but I want to talk to you about these two words, fear not. I mean, how many times have you read that? Uh, God encouraged us. Uh, I, I loved uh, Psalms chapter 23 and verse four. Now this is the uh, new living translation. Can I read this to you? Uh, I love this. It says, even when I walk through the darkest valley, I will not be afraid for you are close beside me. Your rod and staff, they protect and they comfort me. Well, you know, that's that's God's intention. He's going to protect us. He does not want us to fear. As a shepherd would walk alongside the sheep, uh, he he does not want that. He 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 wants you to he wants you to uh to, to draw close to him. I've, uh, my friend, Billy Hunter, he, uh, the, he has a lamb there on his property. He has, uh, an acreage just outside of Antlers, Oklahoma. And he said they, they brought a dog out there and the dog was, you know, I guess a family pet and the dog was just causing just mayhem. And, and the sheep was afraid. The little lamb was afraid. And <laughs> Billy said it came up and leaned up against him and kind of hid behind him. I mean, that lamb knew that there was protection in him, that he didn't have to be afraid. And that's the message that God has for us is don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. He said, though I walk through the darkest valley, I will not be afraid. Fear not. I think it's the most repeated command in the Bible. In fact, now it's been said that there are 365 fear nots in the Bible and one fear not for every day of the year. Uh, Lloyd, uh, what's his name? Oglavy, I think that's what it was. And facing your future without fear. He said there's 366 fear nots in the Bible. One for every day of the year, including leap year. <laughs> I've never taken time to go find that out. I I assume that that's true simply because I know the nature of God. He doesn't want you to be afraid. He doesn't want you drawing back. Now, right now, what we're facing around the world, this coronavirus, I mean, it's very real and it's very serious. Uh, there's been a lot of people that has died as a result of this virus, just like many of the other viruses that have come and gone, the flu and other sicknesses and other disease. But I'm just telling you something. I'm finding families are more afraid of the coronavirus than they are of cancer than they are. I mean, it's, it's like this thing has been so played up in their mind. And even though 99 plus percent of people either don't have much symptoms or they get over it, they recover from it. Still, there's been such paranoia. I, I know a lot of it is politically driven. A lot of it is, is uh, um, that people have an agenda when they begin to tell you this. Uh, I'm just very curious to know after the election, how much of this is going to disappear. Just a thought. I, I just wonder. But the fact is, in people's minds, it's very real and it's affecting them in a very serious way. And, and even to the point that I'm even seeing people because of fear of this thing, that families are, are literally friends, family, they're separating from one another. I mean, they're separating and fear is, is at the very heart of this thing driven by fear. I, that's, that's, of course, that's the way that I can always tell something is or isn't from God is when it drives you, it's not, it's not uh, God. It's not wisdom. It's not caution when you're driven by fear. 
I mean, we are not, and I'm going to speak to the believers right now, we are not called to be people of fear. We are called to be people of faith. You know, that was one of the craziest things, and I I had so much difficulty with this because they were saying back when they wanted the churches to go off for a little while, they said, tell all the people who are sick to stay home, and that goes against everything that is within me. I've never done that in all of these years. I've never told people, if you're sick, stay away from church. You know, I've always felt church was a place that we come to pray for, for the Lord's touch on our life, for healing, for deliverance, or whatever the case is. But we are a people of faith. We are not a people of fear. Can I read you this in Isaiah chapter 51? I love this scripture. It says to me, this is the New King James Version. It says, listen to me, you who follow after righteousness, that's you, that's you and me. Uh, you who seek the Lord, look to the rock from whence you have been hewn and from the hole of the pit from which you have been dug. Now listen, verse two, look to Abraham, your father, and to Sarah who bore you, for I called him alone and blessed him and increased him. So see, you can understand that, that the foundation, the hole that we've been dug from, the rock that we've been hewn from is the rock of faith of someone who walks in fellowship with God and believes God. The Bible said concerning Abraham, he believed God and it was counted to him for righteousness. So that's, that's the kind of people that we are. We're people who believe God. We're, we're not going to be driven by fear. And I just want to say to you right now, make the decision, do not let fear control your life. Don't let it happen because fear, I, I'll be honest with you, I think fear is the single most um, limiting and paralyzing emotion that we can experience. Nothing, well, actually, uh, boy, it bears out right now. Just look across the country. I never would have dreamed, I never would have dreamed that the world, that the United States in just a couple of months' time would be completely brought into subjection, brought into submission. Now, I'm talking about Americans. I'm talking about people whose lives have been built on independence, completely brought into submission. How were they done? Through fear. It's paralyzed them. People are paralyzed. People are completely limited by this emotion called fear. And here's how it works. Fear uses your imagination. And basically, it hijacks your creativity and makes your circumstances and your enemy appear larger than they really are. You know, your imagination goes to work. Your, your creativity goes to work. It's, it's, but it's hijacked by fear. And, and it really just causes all of the things that you're facing to appear much bigger than they are. See, fear and worry, in, in my opinion, I call it, I think that fear and worry, that is imagination abuse. That, that is something that, that you're allowing to come in and abuse your imagination. See, your imagination was never designed to take you into captivity. Your imagination, that, that was designed. God built that. That's the part of you that is so much like God because you can create something that doesn't even exist. God created the worlds out of, out of things that didn't even exist. And, and that's how our imaginations work. But what fear does is it comes in, hijacks that, and makes something that, that brings us into captivity. And, and here's the danger. You can yield yourself to something, and it will become your master. You can yield yourself to something, and you become a servant to that thing. I'm just telling you something, and it can happen in a, in a, obviously, it can happen in a very short time. Look at what's happened across the country. Proverbs chapter four and verse 23. I've all, I often talk about this because I think it's such a profound scripture that defines who we are and how we operate. But it says in, in Proverbs chapter four, verse 23, it says, guard your heart with all diligence. In other words, you be, you be diligent in, in the safeguards of your heart um, the, the, because out of it are the forces of life, the forces, the, 
the empowerment that makes things happen come out of the heart. And if you don't guard it, something like fear will come in and create something that may not even be real, but still brings your entire life into captivity. And this is done by bringing your your thoughts and your behaviors into a place where it dominates you. When, when in reality, what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to bring your thoughts and your behaviors into, into check. You're, you're to arrest the thoughts. You know, uh, it's so important that you realize this, guys. What you think about and what you talk about, that's, that is the access door to your heart. I, I believe that many people have opened their hearts to sickness, to fear, and it literally drew sickness into their life. You know, I realize people that don't believe in God or are famous for believing nothing might think that it's just simply a mechanics situation that sickness and disease, but the spiritual aspect of sickness is something that they've never understood. And I believe that there are spirits that are involved in many things that that are sicknesses. It will surprise you how many times that Jesus dealt with sicknesses or diseases in people by rebuking a spirit, casting out a spirit. And, and I think for people today, they open their heart to sickness and disease, and it's like it just draws it into them. See, whatever you're afraid of, I, I, Job chapter 3, you guys know this one, Job chapter 3 and 25, the, the Job said the thing, I mean, he lost his family, he lost everything, but he made this statement, he said, the thing that I have greatly feared is come upon me. Wow. When it talks about greatly fearing, I mean, think about that. What, what, is, what is something that you greatly fear? When you greatly fear it, that's, that's part of your meditation. You're spending time, you're brooding over that. Your imagination is creating all types of scenarios for that fear to do something in your heart, whether it be with your business, whether it be with your family. Now, I'm going to tell you something. There's been times when I've, I've um, you know, the, the, the other day I, I was... Uh, uh, awakened about three o'clock in the morning, which was very unusual. As a matter of fact, I think I told you about this the other day. And it was like, I couldn't shake the fear. And it was not fear necessarily for me, but it was for my kids. It was for my family. And it was something that was tormenting. You know, I had to get up and walk around, you know, it wasn't something I could just easily shake off. I'm thinking, where in the world did that come from? And many times I find that fear operates strongest at night. Isn't that an odd thing? Maybe one of these times we'll have the discussion about why that happens like that. But it it took me a little while to pull my mind in control because I can't afford through my thoughts and my creativity to create something that doesn't even exist that opens a door for spiritual activity to come into my life, my family, or whatever the case is. So how does that happen? Fear, you know, you have to open the door. That door is the door to your heart. You remember when Jesus made the statement, he said, behold, I stand at the door and knock. What door is that? That's the door of your will. Even God will not violate that. When God was speaking to uh, Cain concerning Abel because he killed his brother, he warned him there. He said, sin lies at the door and his desires to have dominion over you. Uh, the door is the door of your heart. See, there's a lot of things that wait at the door of your heart, but you have to, of your own will, let it be in. And what we've done is we've entertained thoughts, we've facilitated fear, and we gave fear access. You know, it comes in, sometimes it's just gradual. I remember the scripture when it talked about um, about Judas and it said, in one place it said, Judas, it said, Satan put it into the heart of Judas to betray him. And then later it said, and it said, and Satan entered into Judas. So that was two different things. First, he put it in his heart, and the second step was he entered into him. But see, that's how it takes place. And that's why you've got to guard your heart. And you do this 
with your imaginations. Don't let your imaginations run away with you. You know, that's why the Bible said, what is it in Philippians, where it said, whatsoever things are good, whatsoever things are of good report, whatsoever things are lovely, think on these things. Didn't say that other things don't exist, but he said, think on these things. You know, Second Corinthians chapter five or chapter ten and verse five, you know this scripture also. He said, We cast down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Well, what does that mean to the obedience of Christ? To what the Bible said, to what our covenant said about us. I'm bringing every thought in, into obedience to that. You need to read that. We cast down imaginations. See, Job, he had that problem. He said, the thing that I have greatly feared. I wonder how long he entertained those thoughts. I wonder how long he gave access to those things to come into his, come in first into his, his heart and then through his thoughts become a reality. See, you open your heart to empower things that may not even exist and you bring them into reality into reality. Do you understand? Now I realize I'm throwing a bunch of stuff at you, but I just want you to understand that this is how it works. And it can bring into existence things that are on the inside of you and manifest them on the outside of you. See, there's a physical response to everything that comes out of your heart. Now, and that's the truth. And as a result, that which I have greatly feared has come upon me. So that's just how it works. And so you have to understand that. Fear is a spiritual force that creates and releases something in your life. What you're afraid of, what's the deal? You think about it, you talk about it, you yield to it, you worry about it, you meditate about it. You know, I, I, I've heard people say, well, I don't, know how to, I don't know how to meditate. Well, you know how to worry. See, that's, that's the perverted end of meditation because you'll think about it, you'll walk the floor, you'll talk about it, you'll envision things, and it'll cause you to make completely unreasonable decisions in your life, snap decisions. Something will hit you, and you'll respond with a snap decision that's just a wrong decision. Once fear grips your heart, Many times, I'm just telling you, you can't, you, you can't get away from it. You can't just shake it off. That's the truth. See, you have the capacity to open doors spiritually because you are the floodgate from the world of the spirit into the world of the natural. That is why you hold such authority in your heart and your life. You know, I, I remember uh, the, the Bible talked about it, said, uh, talked about a sorrowful heart dries the bones. Well, if a sorrowful heart dries the bones, what does a fearful heart do? You know, the fact is, is if a sorrowful heart affects you physically, if something from the inside affects you on the outside, then what does fear do to you? See, it's toxic. I'm just telling you something. It's toxic. Everything that ever caused you to draw back from opportunities to hide those things, you're going to have to bring them into captivity. You're going to have to. You are. Now, can I just tell you how to fix it? You want me to tell you how to fix it? See, for me, I mentioned, you know, I woke up in the middle of the night and I had that I was tormented. And I literally had to shut those thoughts out of my mind. And I focused my heart on something good that was happening right now. And it was like it was like the other began to just dissipate. You know, when you begin to think about something good, something lovely, when you think about the promises of God, all of a sudden you begin to give room to something else. You you take away the dominion of fear to operate in your life. Now, what you're going to have to do, the answer is really, you're going to have to give yourself to some time in the Word. I'm just telling you, the Word of God is the key to this whole thing. Of course, it's the key to everything. I mean, it really is. It's, <laughs> it's the key to everything. Uh, if, if, you're, if, you are, if, if you're going to succeed, you're going to have to do it because you're going to have to put the Word in your heart. You are. 
Um, I, I remember the uh, Bible spoke about in Matthew chapter 12. It talked about empty, swept, and garnished. You remember that? Jesus was casting out uh, a devil. And uh, let's see if I can remember exactly how that was going. But it said when an evil spirit has gone out of a man, that evil spirit goes through dry places seeking rest. And when he can't find any, he says, I'm going to return to my house from which I came out. And he comes back and he finds it empty, swept, and garnished. And he takes with him seven spirits more wicked or stronger than himself. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. And we've not understood what empty, swept, and garnished meant. A lot of people thought, well, empty, swept, and garnished, what that's talking about is maybe, uh, well, I don't know, empty of, empty of, uh, uh, you know, the, the, they don't belong to our church. They don't go to church. They're not living right. Empty, swept, and garnished is talking about the word because in context, two verses later, a woman pops up, basically interrupts him while he's talking and said, the blessed is the womb that bear thee. And, and that, was the, that was the first time the head of Catholicism began to raise up. And Jesus listened for a second. And he said, yes, true. Blessed is the womb that bore me. But he said, rather, and here's where he brings it back to empty, swept, and garnished. Rather, blessed are they that hear the word of God and keep it. See, what the person had done, they were, an evil spirit was cast out. And when he came back, there was nothing in that person to sustain them from the reentry through his own will, his own emotions, his own fear, opened the door right back up. There was no change. There's no change in him. And the thing that opened up the door in the first place opened up the door in the second place and with him. And there was kind of an agreement, a spiritual agreement somehow that there were other spirits that would be involved in this, which caused, which caused the captivity to be much more intense, much more difficult. So the answer is the word of God. Now, let me just give you here the answer here. First John 4, 4 and 18, you, you I'm sure know this. It says, perfect love cast out fear. Well, that's great. But how do you do the perfect love thing? If that cast out fear, I don't know that I can have perfect love. Well, first John 2 and 5 answers that for you very clearly. It says, whoso keepeth the word... In him verily is the love of God perfected. So keeping the word empowers you with the love to cast out fear. See, you're walking in perfect love because you're keeping the word. And when a spirit of fear tries to come, you're not empty, swept, and garnished. You're filled with something that, that Satan cannot resist. So this creative center of your mind is, is so easily brought into captivity through fear, and you cannot afford to let that happen. Again, I want to just read that one scripture to you. For though we walk in the flesh, we don't war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are, are, are not carnal, but they're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. And here he goes, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against what God said, the knowledge of God, and bringing literally into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. So when he talks about in my mind what you allow, you know, suddenly thoughts are digging in and they form this battle line. And then we're dealing with issues of thought, which is the formations of our imagination. I mean, that's so very important. We're casting down those imaginations, those thoughts. It's a, it's a high thing. It's a powerful thing. It's something that is exalted and something that's very strong. So again, thoughts are the expressions of your imagination that produces meditation in your life. So let me just ask you this question. How many of your thoughts are negative right now? Can I just tell you this? You're building a house with that. You are. How many of your thoughts are negative? How many of your thoughts have to do with you don't like this one and you hate that one and things are going bad and I don't see how we're going to make it? You know, you're building yourself a house. And the tools that you use, well, it's what you say. It's what you see. 
God, when it was time to create something with Abraham, what happened? God said to him, all that you see, I'm going to give you. And it was a visual connection that his faith needed to accomplish that thing that was on the inside of him. So he had him look at the stars and said, that's what your seed is going to be like. You know, this was Abraham, Abraham's responsibility as much as it was God's. His unbelief as well as his faith could have affected what happened in his life. So you're the gate, guys. I'm just telling you, what you declare, what you meditate on, what you see. And and once you see it, it becomes accessible to you, both in the good and the bad. But that's certainly how fear works in your life. And, you know, we have moved out of faith, out of that rock from which we were hewn. We've moved out of faith into fear. And, and uh, we've opened our hearts to something that was very unhealthy, and it produces fear in your life. And that fear, I'm just telling you right now, that is an enemy to your soul. All right? So that's, that's kind of what's in my heart today. I just, I just felt like I just needed to talk to you about the fact that fear is going to affect you in areas that open up your heart to allow things to come in and... and uh, uh, Go into your future because if, if if you confront your fear, you're going to release your future. That's just the bottom line. That's just the bottom line. I I I really feel that it's important that you make the decision what you're going to think about, what you're going to allow, what you're going to watch, what you're going to meditate on, what you're going to sing. Let me just throw this in. I'm trying to get out of here, but it, there's a lot of music today, and and I know a lot of you love country music, but if you'll stop and listen to the words of a lot of music that you listen to, dear God, I mean, you almost need medication by the time they finish with you. You're singing songs, this crying your beer music of how miserable things are and how lonely you are and how bad things are and on and on and on. You don't need that in your life. And if the news is affecting you like that, turn it off. Turn it off. If if it's a, anything that's affecting you in a negative way, you need to eliminate. Because who you are is too important. And fear is trying to sideline you to make you completely ineffective. All right? Well, that's what's in my heart today. And I hope this has been a blessing to you. I'm going to ask you seriously, I'm asking you to like, and please comment, but please share, because I, I truly believe that there's a lot of people today that are facing things, and, and they really haven't thought about it. They know they're afraid, but they don't know where it came from, and they don't know what to do about it. And, and I think that the word that I'm preaching right now, the words that I'm giving you right now, can make a difference in their life. So you need to push share uh, to to get it outside to to others, and also you can go to my YouTube channel, and I have a I have a lot of things there that I think will really be a blessing to you. Go to the YouTube channel and please push subscribe. I would deeply appreciate it. Okay, hey, I'm gonna be back tomorrow, and uh, I want to say don't be afraid. Good things are ahead. I'm just telling you right now. I, I am telling you, good things are ahead. We don't have, we don't have, I, I, who was it, uh, um, Churchill made the statement, we have nothing to fear but fear itself. In other words, there's no meat behind it. It's just the imagination that's keeping us in captivity because in reality, I'm not saying it's not real, but I'm saying we're stronger than that. You know, we, we can whip that thing, but fear tells us we can't. So I just want to encourage you today. You be strong. You've got things to do. I love you guys. I'm looking forward to seeing you tomorrow. Have a blessed, blessed, and wonderful day. I love you guys. Bye.